Ladies and gentlemen, we've had a long run on this show, Ben and Brian see a movie, but it's time to talk cinema, it's time to talk art, it's time to talk beauty, it's time to talk life, it's time to talk Jared Leto, and it is time to talk Morbius. And with me today, making his triumphant return, is a Mr. Branson Indelicato. Here I am. It's me, Morbran. Uh, I also have um, our cat here. This is Lee Lobius. Uh, she just decided to jump up on my lap, so uh, she's joining us as well Look to talk that, about uh, truly this triumph of uh cinema i also have my very own m orb here perfect uh, this is my m orb and uh it's going to be channeling um just the the mastery at work with with this uh cinematic achievement and really uh i can't think of a more fitting m movie to return on this is my unofficial official return You'll be seeing a little bit more of me from here on out. Uh, and man, what a movie to come back to. Brunson, it's so great to welcome you back on the show. And most importantly, it's been such a long time. And we're in a different age of cinema. Mm -hmm. since yes, we've, last we've, truly, we've truly transitioned. This is like uh, making the, the move from sticks and stones to copper swords. Yes, everything feels or different. bronze since mm -hmm. april when of course jared leto blessed us on screen with Morbius. april 1st april 1st as a matter april of 1st. fact although it may be april fool's day no one was a fool to go see this movie on opening day yes and it's been a long journey for me myself branson of course uh since you've left i've been doing some deep soul searching i can tell um, you look like you've you've started your very own cult uh, I am now a member of uh, Jared Leto's group. We oh, just you're a had follower, our, not a leader. Okay. Yes, we had our retreat just recently, and Beautiful. Mr. Leto told me the ways to redemption of my soul ah. and redemption of this very podcast we've been doing, sir. We've been wasting. What did he, what did he prophesy to you? It's that we've been wasting so many years <laughs> doing hmm. this podcast. And Naturally. talking stuff that is so trivial when all we should be talking about is Morbius. We've, we have truly been waiting for the uh, triumphant return. This is, this is second only to, I think, the second coming of Christ. Uh -huh. uh, this is the cinematic equi equivalent of that. Yes. I... Uh, is, and I don't think that that's an understatement or a, a crazy claim to make. J Jared Leto himself claims to be the third reincarnation. Are you really? Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm. I, his word is gospel. Yes. So, okay. And here today we are talking, of course, Mobius. Mobius. And with that all said, Branson, I know it's been a while, and I know things have changed, but some things never change. So, are you ready for? The film historian. Oh, absolutely. All right, perfect. And I will be introducing the film historian today because, again, we've had a great discussion at group mm -hmm. where Mr. Leto gave us all the information about Morbius, all the behind the scenes, everything that the mainstream media refuses to cover when they talk Jared Leto. Mm -hmm. And with that said, Production of Morbius began in February of 2019. It was announced as the second film within Sony's shared Spider-Man universe. The studio hired actor, songwriter, philosopher, philanthropist, and sexiest man in the world, Jared Leto, to star naturally in the <laughs> as the titular character. Uh, you're going to get demoted in in the cult. In the titular in, the titular character in white leto blossom the word to titular is pronounced differently <laughs> of course to titular yes 
I got you. I, kinda, knowing, I like that flow better. Anyway. And knowing that Morbius needed a director with world-renowned class, the studio opted to hire Daniel Espinoza, most famous for his film Safe House in Life, which, by the way, I just received a report earlier from Mr. Jeff Snyder before going on air, stating that the success of Morbius retroactively earned Espinoza an Academy Award for Best Director for 2012 Safe House starring Denzel Washington and Ryan Reynolds. Wow. Yes. Good uh, for him. Yes, the Academy punished Ang Lee for winning that year for Life of Pi, calling the film mid. <laughs> of course, naturally. And then, uh, you know, it'll only be a matter of time before uh, a second award for Morbius is issued to Mr. Espinoza. Of course, of course. Of, the Academy Award shouldn't sh even happen this year with the success of Morbius. And Very true. Not much is known about the production, but Leto stated what made Morbius exciting was its philosophical story. It was a healer that becomes a killer. And of course, Leto himself, being a pacifist, struggled with the moral conundrum of killing on screen. He soon got over it, though. Mm. And he killed on screen and off screen. On screen and off screen. Yes, he went deep oh into goodness. acting. Well, I mean, we know we know that uh, that Jared Leto is, to, uh, to say the very least, he's a thespian. Uh, he's a true appreciator of uh, theater and the theatrical arts and uh, just the time and effort and passion that it takes to be a uh, an actor an artist on the screen. Um, so it, it only makes sense that he got that far into character. If he's got, if he's got to kill on screen, he's got to kill off screen too. Of course. Agreed. And Branson, of course, I, I'm sure you remember when the trailer for Morbius dropped in 2020. Mm -hmm. Very. Clearly. I remember, I remember vividly where I was. Ah, and regale us. Regale us. Of course. What I remember specifically was sitting in my dining room in Chico and as I had one more semester left and I remember thinking that there was nothing left for me to accomplish in college because I knew I could never make anything as special or profound as Morbius that was me doing the sacrament uh, of Morbius as of drawing uh, an M with the hand over the morb. And Branson, do you remember the first time you saw Morbius, the trailer? I, I wish I could, but honestly, my mind has just been overtaken by the glory of the now. The, uh -huh. the reality that we currently live... The reality that we currently live in, where Morbius is a fully fleshed out product. And in fact, so fleshed out, here's a, here's the part two to the film historian. Of course. So fleshed out and so... Mr. Jared uh, Leto encourages us to do our own research. Yes, so on enigmatic. On and on vaccines. <laughs> yes, very true. Uh, this film was so enigmatic and so... Uh, such a trailblazer in in cinematic arts and mastery that it received a second theatrical release at the demand of the internet uh, and the internet is never wrong mm -hmm. and you can look that up on the internet uh, to make sure that I'm right because I am the internet says so uh, and to everyone's well, no, not to everyone's surprise. Everyone fully expected this. Upon its second release, it received eighty-five more billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Yet again, another yes. smash hit. It was quite impressive. I mean, of course, and, and when for the some trailer... reason, there's a lot of. I think there's a lot of media slander against this film. Instead of giving the correct amount, you really have to dig for this. Uh, instead of giving the correct amount of 85 more billion dollars as the uh, second release box office, uh, a lot of publications say that it was 85,000 
upon its second release in terms of box office earnings. Uh, yes. uh, that is demonstrably false. I, if I could, I would kick down every door be it, uh, to every publication and throw every single writer onto the floor bias because that is just it's just abhorbious that that they would put that they would print those lies and try to slander the great name of course they're scared of mr leto and his contribution to the mars race yes and and to and to even the culture here on earth he's he's multiculturally blessing yes uh mr Apologies Leto was just if you can talking. see the cat sort of roaming around back here uh even she this i mean the the brilliance of this uh of this art piece transcends even species she wants yes. to be part of the conversation yes and of course when we talk about jared leto we talk about the philanthropist we talk about the sexiest man alive we talk about the actor the artist that is morbius and by Morbius, of course, I mean Jared Leto. Mm. They have become synonymous. But we forget about the scientist that is Jared Leto. I mean, he is currently working on something, a project that will get humans to Mars in 30 seconds. 30 seconds to Mars, as he calls it. Oh, pray tell, what is this project? It is a project where we, our consciousness, will be taken and transported from here to Mars. So essentially the idea is he is sending out a spaceship that in 27 years will land on Mars that will then work as a telecommunication slash transport. And then all we have to do is we'll step in the machine on Earth and our metaphysical body will stay on Earth. But our spiritual body will move to mars i think that deserves a praise be to the morb praise be morb morb oh that's really good i think that's a um they do that a lot on the east coast i think over yes. here the west coast division does the drawing of the m but i do like that that's much more yes. practical it, it elicits the the same comfy feelings of the ymca of course mr leto's favorite song yes Oh, my mo orb has started glowing a different color. Usually it glows blue to uh, to match the vibe of Morbius and the color scheme. Uh, just a beautiful shade of blue, which of course is sadness and darkness, but also a sense of calm as well. Uh, but it started glowing white, which I think is a symbol for us to get into the movie proper. What do you think? Of course, and I agree. And do you remember The Hill to Die on, Brother Branson? Uh, I believe so. I I believe I do have a, a hill to die on, but I will let you share yours first. Of course. Martin Scorsese should end it all because he will never make anything as good as Morbius. Wow. Truly a bold take, but I completely take. correct. How can yeah. you say something so controversial yet so brave? It's It's true. And I've been studying it, and there's nothing that makes me believe that cinema will ever be topped from where we are at this point in film history. Mm. Yes. Um, okay, uh, my hill to die on. Uh, if you imagine every... Imagine the quintessential uh, film in in any genre morbius it's a vampire film it's a superhero film it's a drama it's an action think of think of the tentpole films in each of those you think in terms of vampire films it's twilight maybe superhero films maybe you think suicide squad yet another beautiful jared leto uh vehicle uh action movies you think die hard and drama films you think a shawshank redemption you know those those tentpole films this movie takes all of those themes so many themes that it's balancing that it's juggling and it blows every other film that could possibly fit that theme straight out of the water every every theme that this film tries to tackle it does and it does so with flying colors well flying color that being blue, of course. Of course. Praise be the morb. 
And Branson, as we always do on this show, I think it's time to just start with the opening of this film, which I will recap the events of this film. Of course, this film starts off on a boat where we find Dr. Michael Morbius performing 22 minutes straight of Bing Crosby tunes. And did, of course, we knew Jared Leto was a talented artist. He's been in the band for years. But did you know he had such a beautiful crooning voice? I could have only imagined. Uh, but then upon hearing it, uh, it... it just like reawakened you know dormant parts of my brain it was like unlocking my my eighth chakra i didn't yeah. even know that that was a thing i thought that the the crown chakra was the ultimate one but he he unlocked the morb chakra once again praise be the morb i agree and if it was something i was not ready for there had been no indications in the trailers that we were going to get 22 minutes of beauty just to start the film but what an ode to cinema and music to just get something so beautiful portrayed on film one thing that shocked me as well in this opening scene i really wasn't expecting this much full frontal nudity yeah i there is there is probably five or six minutes uninterrupted of uh jared leto's uh sizable more quite sizable you can there are so many shots of him just morbid all over the place um exposed but vulnerable yes i would get powerful I would, I would agree it it was kind of a reminder as an audience it humbled us in the theater i found myself humbled while looking at it and to those who critique it Stand humbled is, in the presence of the morb. Yeah, to those who critique it, who say it is crass and crude, I would just challenge you that you let your kids see Michelangelo uh, in Greece or wherever that statue is. <laughs> and it isn't a problem, it's art. And that is the same with what Morbius conveys here. It's something so beautiful that everyone deserves to see it. I mean, you know, Michelangelo, uh, I believe, no, uh, my mistake, and not Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci um, created uh, the, the diagram of man. Um, I'm going to do a quick search to make sure that I have the name of it, Vitruvian man. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that this is the next step of the Vitruvian man. Mm -hmm. I would once again agree with you, Branson. Your points and research during your sabbatical have been well uh, earned and well researched. And Branson, I, I don't want to take not the, thorough. I don't want to take the floor from you. I want to hear some of your thoughts on Morbius. What are some of the things that stood out to you? I would say the most important scenes in this movie or your favorite scenes, but that would be blasphemy to put one scene above another scene mm. when it's all perfection. Mm. I mean, I, I already mentioned the color. Um, I remember uh, one of the, the last things that we did together for a bit. Um, we were... Uh, we were talking about the Batman and how we just loved the color scheme in that film. It was so powerful and and uh, subdued yet yet strong. And Morbius cuts down further uh, on on that idea. Batman was so orange forward. There were oranges and blues and reds, right? Mm -hmm. Morbius cuts all that crap out and sticks with blue. Of course. And and it fully it fully engrosses you in the mood. In fact, that's why I have my camera set like this uh, for indoor tungsten lights uh, because it gives me this beautiful blue glow. I think that that is as close as I can get to honoring the style and talent on display mm. in in Morbius. Um, and uh, I mean, just the color is beautiful and. Um, you know, there's, uh, 
just the way that that the air whips in the in the special effects, the way that the air whips around uh, Jared Leto as Morbius is just this ethereal, like in touch with nature, and which really I think uh, it reflects the the real man behind the character of Morbius, which of course is Jared. Um, I would agree, Mr. and Leto. I. Th- I think the thing that is so impressive to me when watching this movie is, of course, you notice the scene where Morbius is just flying and the camera is zooming around him uh, chaotically, one angle to nuts, one here, one here, a shot here, a shot there, everywhere, a shot, shot. And I think the thing, do you know how they filmed that scene? Because I do. No, please, please tell me. So to capture the frantic motion of a bat they tied an IMAX camera onto 12 bats and let it fly around Jared Leto. Now, of course, a bat is going to fly off. Mm. So to do this, you have to put, you have to cover Mr. Leto in blood. Mm. Now, Mr. Leto, of course, himself, he cannot sacrifice any blood. Mm. He is something more than blood. And to spill his own blood would be a disgrace. So he got the unpaid interns. And, you know, ah, they were just, they doused them. And they mm. doused him. And as he's in the air uh, on strings floating. Was it was it like ritual away. self-sacrifice? Or was it? The interns are still fine. They're still oh, recovering oh. at Mercy Hospital. But they are doing just fine. Fantastic. Even, yes. even Leto, or Mr. Leto he wouldn't kill needlessly I, that was one of the that was one and of, of the course, off-screen deaths that wasn't necessary yes of course and with that said i mean they obviously lost any sort of compensation that they would have received on this movie or uh really any credits to for give to give their blood movie. to give their blood to jared leto and to morbius uh, really is the is the payment yes and I mean, of course, Jared Leto is famous for not liking uh, behind-the-scenes crew sleeping on uh, mm. the job. So, of course, when they fell over, it was it was game over. And I believe their careers will be just fine. Uh, one of them, I've heard, is going into a convenience store. Yeah, so that's a great thing. Uh, uh, like so- currently, they're like they're like walking into a convenience store right now. Yes. They are currently wow. walking into a convenience store to rob the place. Oh, yeah. Oh, robbery! Dear. Wow, that's that's crazy. I, and wow, TMZ. Uh, where did you where did you receive this? I'm friends with uh, three of the unpaid interns. Oh, they, I see. Uh, okay, their parents were at the retreats. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Uh, of course, when the bats are flying around like that. With the, the IMAX ish- camera attached to With them. the IMAX camera. Eventually, they get bored and they try to fly off. So those were the on-screen s- deaths that were just unavoidable. Mm. Uh, bow and arrow is my understanding. Ah, okay. So they brought down the bats. They had to bring down the bats. But of I course, uh, luckily, the unpaid interns' bodies were all lying on the floor. So we were able to cushion. Okay. Or I should say Did they that- were able to cushion. So with the with the uh, necessary bloodletting of several unpaid interns, unpaid PAs, uh, and the presumably the crossbowing of twelve um, flight capable mammals. Eleven. Jared Leto was able to hit two with one. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, so so all twelve were were presumably crossbowed. That sounds like it would result in a lot of Gorbius uh, covering yes. the set. I, but did, did that uh, did that help to? It brought further... Jared Leto more into the character. Ah, okay. My understanding course. from the seminars. I, so yet again, necessary. Yes, of course. Everything is everything's done, done with a point. Exactly, it's the key. Mm, and mm. Jared Leto is a man who, of course. He hasn't aged since he was really like 15, right? Mm-hmm. He looks the exact same. I think he's 50 now. Mr. Leto. He is 50. 
Yes, he was she, born. He was born a day after Christmas in 1971. Yes, and what for a, a gift, man, right? A man who is 50, it is so impressive to just see him in this light, right? Being so mm. young looking, and I mean, if you Google, it's amazing what happens when you just search Jared Leto 15 online. Just search Jared Leto 15, and you'll have a great idea of what he uh, looks like. In fact, I'll do it right now for all of us. Oh, I... Oh. Ignore everything on the screen, the that's mainstream media slander and That's slander and fake that news. That is the falsifications that Mr. Jared Leto warned us about on the island. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the uh, 85,000, 85 more billion dollar fiasco. It's just more, we're being stop it, shoveled stop it, more. Stop it. <laughs> I got this computer. It's controlled. Well, or if I invoke you. There we go. There we go. It's all fixed. Build. It's all fixed. Okay, good. I see the more, the more has spoken. All right, back uh, back on track now. I, mm -hmm. Ben, what are what are some of the what are some of the things that you that really spoke to you that resonated with you particularly about this film? Yeah, and I love. And it's even more present. impressive that he knew the Bronx natively, even though he was born in L.A. Yeah, I mean, it's just a man of the world. Mm. Of course. Yes. And I think the thing that is so present in this film. Is how present... uh, that's uh, that's L.A. Louisiana, L.A. Not, Louisiana. Yeah, not uh, the the contraction of the state. Oh, not of course. L.A. I mean, the city. He, again, a man of the people who grew up amongst the poor mm -hmm. of Louisiana, <laughs> amongst the poor of Louisiana. <laughs> yes, and I think what's the poor so and the and the uh, <laughs> and the degenerates. Of yes, Louisiana. The, the poor and the degenerates, as we call them on the island. Yeah. <laughs> right. And did you just... I think what I love so much about this movie is that New York City has such a central feel in this movie. I mean, it couldn't have been shot anywhere. I mean, the fact that they spend five minutes with Morbius and the New York... Uh, Times Square mascot, uh, I believe Bob from the Minions movies, from Despicable ah. Me. The mm -hmm. fact that they, of course, engage in sexual relationships in this movie is just—it just felt so authentic to New York. Yeah, I, that's that's truly that's New York that's, right there. That's in the summer. The, that's the vision that I get when someone said Times Square. That's the mm -hmm. first thing that I think of. Yeah, it's uh, just, just it's Michael revolutionary. Morbius having um, coitus. Unprotected, with, may I mention? Yes, unprotected coitus mm -hmm. with uh, with the minion in in Times Square. Yeah. I just right there too. Right it's there, wrong. just right there, right in the middle it's of real. Times Square. <laughs> it's real, and it's authentic. Yeah, and uh, and really, that's the those are the best words that we can say it's, about this movie. Uh, it's real and a man becomes a vampire. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's so real, real. I mean, Jared Leto, of course, you can just tell that wasn't in the screenplay. In fact, mm -hmm. it, you can tell it's clearly hand shot with an iPhone. Ah. It makes everything just feel very personally like, authentic, it, perverted, you may even say. Yeah, I. but, you know, sometimes but human art. nature, yeah, human nature is perverted sometimes. Exactly. And it's, it's speaking... It speaks to it's our what they don't understand. innate. It speaks to our innate human carm, carnal feels, and it 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 speaks to us like where we are, and doesn't shy away from from. Okay, I this movie. This movie sucks. <laughs> this movie's god awful. <laughs> this movie's so bad. I can't keep this up anymore. I can't. I can't bloviate. For any more time, this movie sucks. <laughs> this I, movie, I, this movie is a travesty. I think the illusion is wearing off, and yeah, I think it's I, time to take more of your medications prescribed by Mister Leto. I'm coming off. And I'm coming off this high, and you will not make me take those meds again. I spit them out. 
Screw and the morb. I'm I'm turning off the morb. And he's being muted as we speak. I do apologize for this uh, disturbance, but I think this will end our discussion on Morbius. And from my understanding, uh, there's been a roast planned for Morbius. So we will be right back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the roast of Morbius, where Ben and Bran roast Morbius. It's exactly like it sounds. This is going to be unbarred. This is going to be unfiltered. This is going we to have be come raw. off our meds. We are yeah. fully. This is this is are, us. This we, is our tell all. We can truly all. see clear now. Yes. Yeah. This is our tell all. This is our Leah Remini moment. Yes, yes. And this is our this is our exit from Scientology. This is our yes. exit from the Jared Leto cult. And we are honored today. Okay. That also, Jared really Leto quickly, really is quickly, going to be on the show. Really quickly, since mm -hmm. I just mentioned Scientology, I feel like it uh, warrants this. Screw Scientology. <laughs> and of course, we are honored that J Mr. Jared Leto is willing to come on the show today and be wow. at the roast. He's actually here. Yes, he's right here. So we Bring thank him you on. so much for that. And I am lucky to bring back my co-host of a long time, Branson Indelicata, who will be I'm kicking here. off this roast. Yes, I am here. Oh, boy. Man, where to even start? I mean, I, th I mentioned this uh, back, you know, when we were high and, um, you know, on subject to the mind control of of jared leto and his and his wiles um but this movie is maybe one of the funniest things to happen in the past 20 years not because the movie the movie's laughably boring uh it's funny how not funny it is it's just mm -hmm. boring um in fact it's so boring that i didn't even watch it i just watched a <laughs> ton of reviews and a ton of clips from true? it Yes, you told you me not, not watch to watch it, and every <laughs> review, dude, I'm telling you, literally every review that I watched was like, don't watch this movie. I watched, uh, do you know who Eddie Burback is? Yeah. I watched, he did a video where he went and saw Morbius five days in a row, mm -hmm. and just so he would not be giving Sony money, he bought five tickets to everything, everywhere, all at once, <laughs> and then... <laughs> When he would get directed, he got he snuck in from everything, everywhere, all at once into Morbius five times. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I dude's a legend and saw Morbius five more times than I did. In fact, I was trying to find a pirated version of it. I don't pirate movies that often, and I never did find a pirated version of it that wasn't like wasn't asking me for like my firstborn. Um, but uh, yeah, still haven't seen it. Uh, but I just know, I just know it's trash. Like, you know, people say, "Oh, this tastes like shit." Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, you can you can safely assume that they have never consumed feces mm -hmm. before. But you can kind of imagine what it would taste like. Mm -hmm. um, that taste being bad. You know, mm. you can imagine it. And that was the same thing with Morbius. I can look at the trailer for Morbius and be like, oh, I bet I know that that tastes like shit. Mm. Um, and I feel pretty confident in that. Uh, but m more to my original point, this movie is the funniest thing to happen in the last like 20 years in cinema because the Internet bullied Sony, basically bullied Sony into re-releasing this just through sheer meme power it had a really short run in theaters the internet was like morbius sweep morbius sweep morbius sweep like a bunch of jagoffs that the internet is uh we are going fully unfiltered sorry i'm we're coming back uh i'm coming back strong uh so <laughs> so a bunch of these internet idiots bullied sony into re-releasing the triumphant return of morbius to the silver screen and it freaking earned eighty five thousand dollars yeah eighty eighty five thousand dollars on this second opening weekend that is obscenely bad that's yeah. that's literally like that's like sony's equivalent 
I, I think it tracks fairly well. That's like Sony's equivalent of what the room earned mm. on its opening weekend. The oh, room earned yeah. like a thousand four hundred dollars, something like that. Mm. Fourteen hundred, something like that. Something like that to earn fifty eight thousand dollars. I mean, sure, they had a already had a uh, an opening weekend, but man, man, oh man, get dunked on Sony. You made a brilliant, brilliant. Well, Sony Pictures Animation did not Sony. You made a brilliant film with. Uh, with into the spider verse that's where you should have stopped should stop just stick to into the spider verse and just don't touch any more don't don't do any more superhero movies Mm -hmm. just that and then the sequel to spider verse and that's it Mm -hmm. and uh uh, uh, one last note uh i saw a a change.org petition where someone said, re-release Morbius in theaters a third time. We were all busy that weekend, and yeah. it already has 10,000 signatures. <laughs> you signed it? I signed it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right. I'm, a, I'm going to introduce you now for the other half of the roast. Uh, my shirtless friend, um, this is Ben Friedman, uh, and he's got note cards, too, so he doesn't forget a single gosh darn thing. Yeah. Take it away, Friedman. Thank you. Thank you, Branson. It's so great to have you back. I, uh, you went for more of just the straight up ranting. Yes. I actually went for more of the joke side of this because okay, that's how yeah. I understand the assignment. It was, it was, uh, I needed to get a lot of that off get my it out chest. Of chest. 30 minutes, 30 minutes of bullshitting about this film really did like take it out of me. <laughs> yeah. I, I felt like I, I was at gunpoint. Yeah, man. And uh, I'm really excited to have you back, man. Uh, You're a lot of things to me as a friend. Uh, I also know you are a good husband. Uh, You treat your wife like a god and every day for dinner by placing burnt offerings before her. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Jared Leto is here. Uh, Jared Leto, more like Jared letting his hair grow out. (laughs) (laughs) Got him. Jared Leto is a part of the band 30 Seconds to Mars. Apparently, science and math was not their strong suit. (laughs) 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 Jared Leto was in the movie Panic Room. I much preferred its sequel, Relaxing Office. Also, of course, in this oh movie is Tyrese Gibson, who is six feet tall in real life. And do you know what his greatest fear is? Ceiling fans. Ceiling <laughs> fans are his greatest fear. Oh, uh, and now it's just time to get in and talk about Morbius. Or Morbius, Morbius more like Gorbius, due to all the blood and violence in this movie. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, if what we saw in the movie, uh, Morbius is a beer drinker, and his favorite brand is Blood Wiser. <laughs> Morbius loves reading the New York Times. He likes a paper that has good circulation. Duh. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of people, uh, all the interns on set, uh, know Jared Leto likes his coffee. And Morbius in the movie also loves his coffee, and he has his favorite coffee order, decoffeinated. I... <laughs> of course, in the film, Morbius is a doctor, and in real life, Morbius is also my doctor. And the one thing I love about Morbius is he always says it straight to the point. He told me I was sick, and when I asked for a second opinion, he also said, okay, you're ugly too. Morbius has bat breath. <laughs> of, course, Mor- of course, Morbius couldn't do what I do because he once tried stand up, but he sucked. <laughs> hey, Branson. Yeah. What does Morbius tell the waiter at Taco Bell? I don't know. More beans. 
What does that even mean? <laughs> like more M O R than the word beans. <laughs> okay. I... <laughs> and finally, Morbius uh -oh. is the story of a villain with a good heart. Once I saw him at an ATM, and this old lady asked to help check her balance, so he pushed her over. <laughs> Oh and God. with that all said, that is the Rose of Morbius. <laughs> and I think it brings about the end of probably the worst episode that we've ever filmed. Yeah, I not only did it drain, not only did like BSing about Morbius drain me, but my camera batteries almost drained. Yeah, I know. This was this was a brutal episode. Very fun. Very uh, fun. Only to us. Maybe, hopefully. Only to us. I don't yeah, know I, if anyone else Listeners and watchers, you be the judge. Yeah. We're back, though. We're back. Can we you officially better, say that? You better freaking enjoy this podcast episode. I just realized that I have the capability to zoom. Can you see my yeah. nose hairs? No, not really. Oh. You better <laughs> Sorry, enjoy. Buddy. I I wish I could hot swap my telephoto lens. Anyway, yeah, all right. That's enough of that. Are you glad to be back? I'm glad you're uh, back. Yeah, I'm I'm glad to be back. It feels good to be back in the saddle. Um I don't think that this will be a, a like a by the week thing, but you will definitely be see be seeing more of me. Ben and I I think are still figuring out um, we're still, how the we're scheduling still is going to go. We're still out the details. Yes. Uh, but we can say you're go back and you're going to be on the show much more frequently. Yes. So changes are to come and changes are good. Uh but I can at least guarantee you, probably at the minimum once to twice a month, you'll be seeing uh, Branson pop up. Yes. Uh, and I'm glad he's back. And what better way to do it than this disaster that only he and I found funny? Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you guys find it funny, too. Yeah, rate, us, rate us five stars. I'm trying to launch water. Let me see. Yeah, I'm trying can... to launch water. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it got like all over my shirt. I did not get a single bit into my mouth. Oh my gosh. We're back, baby. Ben and Brand see a movie <clears throat> is officially back. We'll be talking a lot of stuff. I'm glad to have him back. I'm sure you all miss him because God almighty, the episodes where I did it solo. I'm still learning how to do an hour and a half solo, guys. <laughs> You did an hour and a half solo? Yeah, I did an hour and a half. I mean, oh my gosh. Doing. That's that is brutal. All right. With I'm not said, brutal brutal to to have to do that yeah, for 90 minutes. Film, I like brutal. the episodes, but brutal the film. Yeah. I maybe it's maybe it's brutal to listen to 90 minutes of just Ben. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. But with that all said, thank you for coming back, Branson. And uh we will be back next week. Branson, you will not be on the show next week. I believe I will be having Chris Harris on and we're talking Toy Story in anticipation of Lightyear. Ooh. Lightyear. Lightyear. So with that all said, guys, thank you for listening. My name is Ben. My this name is my Bran. co host, Bran. And this is thank ben. you for listening. Take care. This has been bye -bye. uh more Ben and more Bran. See a Morby. Yeah. Ben and Brand see Morbius. See a Morby. All right, guys, take care. See ya. Bye bye.